Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kellen, and hey, Randy. Hey, Gabby. Gabby, do you think I should have my camera on? Um, yes, if you can, that would be great. OK. Great. I see here um, that we have attendees logging on. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Gabby Hughes. I'm a counselor here at uh, Santa Clara University. And we'll just give a few minutes to get everyone situated, make sure that we have as many of you on so we can get started. Uh, for those of you that are logging on, you'll see um, our ambassador here, Kellen. Um, he's our student ambassador. He'll be helping me with Q&A as we get closer to the end of the presentation. We'll do a little bit of an introduction once we get um, uh, all the people in here, as many as we can so that we can get started. Again, welcome. You're in the right place if you are here for the Santa Clara University Summer Series um, uh, Topic Thursdays. Awesome. I'll let you guys get all situated. I'll share my presentation slide here. Um, again, Thank you for participating. If you're already getting comfortable, you can share with us uh, where you're logging in from on the uh, q and I know I said the chat, but it's the Q&A, so I apologize for that. So it's a Q&A if you wanna share where you're um, visiting from. Again, we're just waiting a couple minutes to make sure that we have a good amount of you uh, logged on so we can get started. Kellen, you want to read some of our participants where they're visiting from? Yeah, so Derek is from Shanghai. Caitlin is coming from San Francisco. Um, another Caitlin is coming from San Diego. Um, Randy is coming from Dublin, California. Uh, Gavin is from Temp Tempe, Arizona. Uh, we have Sophia from New Orleans. Uh, we have Priyanka from Fremont, California. Sydney Mosser from North Carolina. Zoe Marks, um, all the way up from Manhattan. Stephen um, from River Forest, Illinois. And Julie, Austin, Texas. Um, Dr. Susan Toth uh, from Seattle, Washington. Ed from Pleasantville, New York. We have another Fremont, California uh, resident in Say. And uh, Niu from Beijing, China. Uh, Lawrence from Jupiter, Florida. Neve from the Bay Area. Arjun from Cupertino. Uh, we have Lauren from Orange County. Um, we have Allison, um, a Santa Clara native, and we have an anonymous attendee from Nicaragua. Nice. Uh, we have Vedant from Palo Alto, uh, Rohan from uh, the Bay Area, um, and we have another San Diego uh, native from Jeffrey Lee, um, and we have Milleray from Chile. Awesome. I know I said um, share in the chat. I apologize for that. It's on the q and I believe chat is disabled just for the webinar so we can get kind of things going. Um, for those of you that are joining in now, um, thank you so much for joining. You're in the right place if you're here to um, hear about Topic Thursdays. Um, if you want to share where you're uh, coming in from, um, logging in from, it's uh, you can share on the Q&A. And I apologize for that typo there. Uh, but I believe we're getting closer to, I'd like to give people five minutes just to kind of get in, get settled um, so we can get started. It's going to be a pretty um, relaxed thing. You're not, you know, you, you don't have to take notes. We are going to record this and provide that for you. Uh, in fact, I believe it's still already recording. So um, we did one at 9 a.m. and we did one at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So we'll pick one of those um, to post on um, our website, which is wanna get the best quality, um, but you'll get the same information. Um, so if you, you know, wanna take a picture of a certain slide just to have that information, go ahead and do that as well. So um, no pressure guys, I know it's summer, you guys are getting just started rising seniors, uh, rising juniors, anyone younger than that. Um, if you're starting now, uh, looking at the application process, um, good for you. Um, 
it'll be uh, less stressful for you. I mean, there's some stress that you can't avoid, but it'll, it'll be good. All right, so we're nearing here. We have a pretty good amount of participants um, online already, so we should get started so that um, we are mindful of your time. So um, let me go ahead and just reintroduce myself. My name is Gabby Hughes. I'm one of the counselors here at Santa Clara University, and I will be your host. Uh, we also have an ambassador uh, online, Kellen, who is online here, and um, he's a great ambassador and summer intern, uh, has been helping us with these topic Thursdays. If you've been a part of the other ones we've had already, uh, pretty fun, uh, very engaging, and a lot of information. Um, they will be available on our YouTube channel, but you'll get direct links uh, from my followers up email. So we're working on getting those to you. Uh, but that said, we also have a counselor online that will be um, kind of helping me out if there's a question that uh, requires a little bit more detail. Um, but uh, you're in good hands. You're in good hands. So this topic Thursday is tips and tricks to stand out as an applicant. Um, again, this is a recorded webinar and we're going to hold all questions um, at, at the end for Q&A. So drop those in as you, you know, you're listening along so that we can address them at the end. Um, we're not stopping you from doing that, but we do want to just continue and make sure we get the information out. Uh, please know that this is not a uh, presentation to game the system. In fact, though that there are a lot of similarities and generalities in the world of admission, um, institutions can vary uh, with their different requirements, deadlines, profiles, cultures, et cetera. So uh, however, these tips, and I would even say pointers, um, uh, to note when approaching the application process can really help you uh, stand out and uh, we'll go into detail as to what I mean by that. So with that, let's get into it. All right, so one thing I would like to point out um, that will be very helpful for you, you'll see here on the screen, uh, we have several accounts. We have the Instagram available to you, either our admission or our Santa Clara one that you can um, follow. It's really good information that we share there. You'll also see our website that is actually a very good um, site has a great search engine, has a lot of information, uh, scu.edu. You'll also see a SCU uh, blog where you, where you can actually get some information on some of the topics we're gonna touch on. Uh, one of them is FAFSA and CSS profile. The other one is approaching those two um, supplemental questions that refer more to Santa Clara University. And then we also have the Facebook that you can also um, use. It has a lot of the same information we post uh, on socials. It just depends on what you prefer and what's more, um, you know, something that you like getting your information from. So it really is up to you which one you choose. But we do have a lot of really um, timely information for you, deadlines, uh, tips, information of what our students are doing. Uh, we recently had a really cool uh, series of uh, takeovers from our student ambassadors and they share a lot about the day in the life of a student here at Santa Clara, especially in the summer. It's always kind of like a mystery what the kids are doing, especially if um, they're not at home. So um, definitely check those out and stay connected. It's very important. We give a lot of tips. All right, so we're going to break apart all the different elements of the application during this uh, webinar, and that's the transcript, the school profile and academic rigor, the extracurricular activities, your essay and supplements. So, um, and sorry, letters of recommendation uh, that for us is either from one is required for a teacher or a counselor, but you can submit up to three at Santa Clara. Again, it all depends on which university you're checking out. And of course, your interest in Santa Clara University. So we'll break them apart. We'll go through them and give you more information. Um, but remember, each institution is different, but this is a really good um, uh, guide to, um, to really break those apart. We use a common app, so we'll definitely be referencing that. So general advice before you start, before you tackle that application, um, start early avoid that rush and then you can avoid some of the stress. Um, sometimes you're not gonna be avoiding all the stress. Obviously anything that is worthwhile doing is gonna take some work, it's gonna take some struggle. Uh, so there is stress already associated with it, but um, definitely 
by not rushing and not waiting till the last minute, um, you can definitely avoid some of that. Um, document and track, use Google Docs to track your school's information, et cetera. It's a really good tool to use um, to just keep track of what each university is requesting from you. Again, you're gonna be um, looking at UC, state schools, um, private schools, Santa Clara is a private school. So um, some of the requirements that we have might be different from other schools. So keeping a good document uh, portal will be really helpful, um, especially one that you can share with with, um, with people um, that are going to be helping you through this um, whole process. Consider the costs. Um, um, excuse me, I skipped one. Uh, keep good records. That goes in hand in hand with documenting and tracking. Uh, what programs have you participated in? Uh, what activities? I recently sat down with a couple of parents who were talking to me about their student, and they actually, uh, as we were talking, they could come up with a bunch of different other um, activities and programs that they were a part of that they had completely forgotten about. Um, so do a little brain dump on uh, a document and uh, really go through each year and, and see if you can remember which of those activities um, and sports, hobbies, whatever it is that you were working on, um, you can um, keep track of and, and document. Again, uh, moving on to uh, the next one, it's a very important one. Consider the cost, um, be very open about talking about money and how uh, each program costs, de de depending on the university that you're looking at or college, um, and be very open about those conversations with um, those who are supporting you, so your parents, your grandparents, any other family or uh, counselors, uh, mentors. Um, definitely discuss the FAFSA and the CSS profile. The CSS profile is an online application that collects information used by hundreds of colleges, uh, universities, programs, uh, scholarship programs, and um, that is one that we look at when we look at your financial aid package as a private university. So we definitely um, advise you to um, create that. And of course, the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, which focuses on federal aid. So both of those, please have those filled out by the time that you submit your application. Uh, it will reduce so much stress and um, you won't be struggling at the time that you're trying to figure out where you're going to end up and you're considering all your um, decisions there. Um, collaborate. This goes back to all of the things I just talked about. Have a trusted strategic view um, to provide feedback and support. You're going to need it. Um, the just in general, this process has so many different moving pieces that um, having a support system is going to be very helpful. Um, so definitely start um, asking for help. Um, I know that in this day, it in this age that you're in, it's hard to do, um, but definitely start uh, practicing that as you're gonna become an adult and you are going to eventually need um, someone to collaborate either at projects or whatever it is that you're working on. And again, uh, drafts are your friends. Um, here, you will not get the perfect essay on the first try. I would love for that to be true. I love to write, but I know that as a fact, you're not going to get it perfect the first time around. So just be very comfortable with that and um, just accept that as a, um, a fact and, and you'll do a lot better. You'll manage that stress a lot better. And of course, check your work, grammar, spelling, style. Before you hit submit, you really want to be looking at um, all the information you're submitting because you don't want to have to um, clarify or, or wonder if you actually sent in what you needed to send in. So grammar, spelling, style, um, facts, all of that information, check your work. All right, first things first, your transcript. And um, this is something that I know it eludes a lot of students. So understanding your transcript can uh, help you shape your essay or any additional information uh, you want to provide in case there's something missing. Um, since it's important that you are college ready, um, uh, we do uh, make sure that you, you want to you're going to thrive in college. So we do look at your academic history. Um, it's important. It's part of the review. Um, you're not going to get into a good school, you know, with a low GPA. It's not everything that we look at, but it is important. I mean, we do want you to be college ready. Um, so here you'll see um, some things to consider when you're looking at your transcript. Does your transcript have all your academic history? Did you take any classes in college, dual enrollment, outside programs to local uh, colleges and universities? Does it have all that information? 
does the transcript um, tell your academic story? Uh, if for some reason it doesn't, you can use the additional information, essay or activity sections to provide more insight. Did you struggle with the class that you later improved on? Did you want to take more college courses because your school did not offer them? Um, did you have to drop classes because you realized you wanted to focus on other classes like math to apply for engineering school? All of those things might not be evident in your transcript, so you have to find ways in order to um, provide that supplemental information, either in additional information sections, essay, or activities. Um, sometimes their transcript doesn't um, really tell that story. We just see your grade. So it's good one to check if it has all that information as it should, and also where it's um, lacking in really giving us your whole um, information as a student. Uh, one thing to know as you're going to be checking out all these schools uh, across the board, some of them we're going to be looking at unweighted or weighted GPA. We look at unweighted, which means that we do not take the uh, difficulty level of your classes into account. So we look at zero to 4.0 scales. Um, weighted, um, some schools do do that. Um, they take a look at that. It does take uh, in, a, uh, in, in scale your difficult level uh, of your classes. So um, that scale can go from zero to 5.0 or above. Again, at Santa Clara University, we do look at your unweighted GPA. And if your school provides that, we um, can calculate it, we can fix it. So you don't have to worry about that. With that in mind, you have to make sure that you submit those transcripts on time. So that's very, very important. Uh, make sure that you just don't um, hang on the fact that you, know, um, you have the service do it or your school do it, especially when you take account vacations, uh, in staff days, um, summer, all that stuff. Um, just keep in mind that those transcripts have to make it in our hands. So something to keep in mind. Hand in hand, school profile and academic rigor. Um, this is a good one to kind of go over. Um, when we're looking at your transcript, we carefully look at rigor. Um, when doing so, we take account that not all schools are the same. Um, they offer different things. And additionally, not, circumstan not all circumstances are the same. So, um, so we definitely look at equity um, and what your school offers versus what you're taking. So some schools will offer a lot of options in AP, IB, honors. Um, you can definitely take advantage of those. Some schools do not. So you have to be creative, um, especially let's say you're homeschooled. Um, we do want to encourage those of you who are to take college courses and really challenge yourself. The point is to see how you're challenging yourself. So um, by taking these courses, uh, we see that uh, productively challenge yourself. And um, we see that you develop very important skills like critical thinking, practical application, that lets us know that you are college ready because you are coming into a college. And especially if you take a look at our profile, um, we have a very high profile for um, academic success. So uh, that's something that you have to take into account. Um, so we want you, we want to see that progression that you're challenging yourself in that. Um, with that said, I will advise that um, you gauge where your healthy balance is. Uh, be mindful of what you can take on. Um, you remember, you have to, to maintain this um, uh, rigor, so to speak, um, throughout many years when you start college. So start practicing now that you're in high school. What is your healthy balance? You can't just take a handful of APs just to take them. Um, you really have to be mindful about your education because that also tells us um, that you're aware, that you're self-aware, and that although you're challenging yourself, you also are aware um, that there are limitations depending on what your responsibilities are. So we do look at rigor in the sense that, yeah, you're taking these academic courses, but um, are, are you the type of student that has to have a job because you're saving for college or because you're helping your parents or you don't have a job because you're helping with your siblings? So that's actually has definitely morphed um, a little bit into our rigor um, evaluation because considering um, COVID that has been a reality for a lot of our students. And we've seen that across the board in our application. So um, what we see here, the, the pointer I, and, and I guess tip that I would um, suggest here is that look at your situation and see what you can make the most out of and um, definitely show that in your um, uh, 
application by adding that to any additional information or your essay or your supplementals. And we'll get into that as we go along. All right, extracurriculars. These are more than check marks. These are more than things that you have to get done in order to get into college. These really should reflect who you are as um, the very um, wise Yoda says, in your activity list, show yourself you must. And really, we really wanna see you, um, who you are. Um, sometimes, you know, you may be young, you don't know what you are, you're just exploring. So uh, do that with intention. What are the things that really call your attention and, and really explore it in that way? Um, that way, when we see your progression, it makes sense. And again, we'll touch on this, what, what I mean here. Um, as a university, we want to see uh, entrepreneurial spirit. That's a big one for us. Uh, critical thinking, innovation, service, continuous improvement. Um, uh, on your activities list, are you uh, always just a member of a sports team? Um, are you always just a member of a club? Or are you a founder of a club? Um, have you started as a member and then you branched out to other things? Uh, we really wanna see a progression um, to see that you're, you're growing uh, as a person. So, and those are the type of students that we are always looking for. Um, I know all of you know the examples of extracurricular sports, arts, uh, research programs, special projects. I've seen internships. Um, those are really fun to see um, just because uh, I know it's as um, at that age is really hard to put yourself out there. So to me, at least when I read applications, I see internships. I already go like, oh, this is really interesting. You know, you're putting yourself out there, shaking hands, even you can even say that, oh, well, I, you know, my uncle, like, let me have an internship at his uh, company. It takes a lot to ask for a favor and to ask for help. So that in itself is already telling me, okay, yeah, maybe you got it because you had connections, but you had to ask. Uh, and that's really, really hard, especially after two years, three years plus of COVID to develop those skills. So th those always look a, a little interesting to me. Uh, special projects, again, research super interesting uh, missions um, that you have through your church or through special um, clubs, volunteering, really important uh, hobbies and family responsibilities are always good to add there. Uh, paid work, you know, that's some a reality for many of us that had to save up for college. So all of those can um, be examples of extracurricular activities. So again, just uh, approach it as something that really reflects who you are, that's important to you, and not something that you're just doing to fill an application. Um, we should talk about what that looks like in the Common App, just because um, maybe you have, a lot of you have seen some stuff on YouTube or some content where you see a little bit what it looks like when you're actually filling it out. Um, this is a little glimpse of it. You can see the activity types. You can see um, how many characters that you know you can put in there, participation grade levels, all that good stuff. Um, and then we'll get into exactly what I mean by um, you have to be very uh, tactical is how you present that information. So think resume. I put up here good examples um, when you're putting in your activities in, um, in the Common App. And good examples would look like this. You know, you see volunteer at Good Kitten Sanctuary, obviously, as an example. Um, I lead the organization of incoming donations, tours of the facility, and guest greeting and relations. Here, I see that you're taking the lead, as you can see on the highlighted um, word there. And you're giving me information about your role and the place that you're uh, volunteering at. And I'm already seeing, oh, very clearly that you took care of all these things. Uh, then we see here mentor at We Can All Code. I host a number of coding camps where I teach young students the basics of coding. Um, I'm already seeing here another clear directive of what you were doing. And I see that you were a mentor and where you were a mentor at. That's, uh, that's a good example. That's a good example. Blah examples are, for instance, member, comma, soccer, joined, HS, soccer team. Our team won several championships. Um, again, kind of blah. And then at the bottom here, we see HSSV volunteer, volunteered weekly by helping with cleaning and walking the animals. So what makes these blah? One, you're not capitalizing at all. You're just kind of putting it there. You um, joined, um, that's great. HS, I know it's high school, but I mean, really just spell out, you know, your high school or um, the type of club you joined. 
uh, won several championships. What kind of championships? Is it just your school championship or is it uh, countywide? Is it statewide? Sometimes uh, a student will put this information and I've come to find out through a letter of recommendation that it was like a major championship. You don't wanna miss an opportunity. Um, HSSV, I know what that is because I live in the Silicon Valley. So I know that's Humane Society of the Silicon Valley, but another counselor might not know that. So spell it out, make it very clear, like a resume of uh, what you've been up to. And again, um, you know, volunteer, that's great. A lot of us volunteer, but did you do anything exciting or anything meaningful? Um, that's what we want to see. And that's why um, these two examples are Mm, may right we want to see the good ones there's some passable ones there we can you know figure it out but you want to stand out you want to you want to make them good think resume uh be intentional so uh, we're not looking for 10 activities we are looking for leadership roles and dedication we want you to average those hours honestly uh, we're not going to be checking to see how many hours you're going to be uh, volunteering but just average them out um, make sure you capitalize and punctuate make it clean again like a resume take some time to properly fill it out in wordsmith with powerful action verbs as counselors we actually check our um our common app we tested for for you guys to have it ready and believe you me i feel your pain because i had to update some random information in there but even though it was random it was just really a pain in the butt but you know what you got to do it you got to do it and you got to do it right do the best you can to make it as um you know straightforward as you can um Take some time to um, use powerful action verbs and wordsmith it. We're not asking you to embellish. We're not asking you to lie. We just want you to take the time to properly and meaningfully share what you have spent your time in. I mean, you've spent so many hours. Some of those uh, activities lists I've seen are incredible. Take the time to actually fill it out and um, put your best foot forward. That's the bottom line on that. Essays and supplements. Um, this is a one where, you know, has a lot of attention, that essay, right? It's not the make it or break it. It's really more, um, it's just as important as everything else. I recently told, told a colleague that an essay is just as important as your transcript and all of those other parts because uh, it just, everything together makes who you are. So let's hear your voice. Again, on this one, start early and devote scheduled time. It is super hard to be disciplined, especially in the summer, if those of you are starting to work on those essays, but it's worth the time. You won't be stressed and you'll just get it done and do it properly. Um, consider the essay prompts uh, that Common App provides. Uh, pick the one that really calls to you. Um, you can even start with just brainstorming and uh, considering all of them and then come up with the best one. Um, have a plan brainstorm, outline, drafts. All of you that are in this webinar are probably really good students who have written some bomb essays. So you already know this, brainstorm, outline, drafts. Um, you know, we see a ton of these emails that are just like block essays, uh, excuse me, essays that are just blocks. We like to see that break up just like a regular essay. Um, we look at that and we go like, oh, this is gonna be a hard one. Um, but we get really excited when it's a really nice flowing one. So again, that will make you stand out. Um, stay focused on addressing the prompt you choose. Sometimes you can bunny trail, try to avoid that again. The brainstorming, the outline, and the draft, it's definitely going to help you do that. Um, the topic should be a lens that you use to talk about yourself and not about that topic. So let's say you use... Um, your experience as a, uh, I don't know, a water polo player um, that has been a very meaningful experience for you, that's totally okay. But it's not about water polo. It's about what that has done to you as a person and what you've become because of it. So um, for instance, I saw an essay uh, about a, a soccer player um, who actually lived under very strict parents that wouldn't let him go anywhere. But because he was in soccer, he was able to travel. He was able to explore things he was able to make friends and uh, it really became a sense of freedom so that's a really cool um, lens to use uh, and that's really what we want to see we don't want to hear about soccer in general we want to hear about you and what soccer has done for you if you're talking about a parent or grandparent we want to see why that parent or grandparent inspires you and what has and how that has transformed you so we want to see that 
but also um, what has it meant for you? Because we want to hear about you. Um, with that, um, proofing and polishing, it should not get rid of your voice. It should not get rid of your point of view. We really want to hear about you. So be very careful with that as you have people proof it and, and polish it, that you don't lose who you are in that essay. Uh, on that vein, uh, don't push any fancier language or uh, sentences that you wouldn't use um, because then it's just not gonna come as genuine. So be very comfortable with who you are and don't lose that, that voice and that point of view as you are proofing. Um, again, details matter. Uh, mechanics and grammar, punctuation and style are all still very important. Uh, it's very hard to flow with that uh, writing when we have to stop be like, oh, that should be a punctuation or all oh, that should be a comma or this should break up. So um, just make it as smooth as you can. And uh, additional pointers here. Um, here's some examples here. I'm actually gonna start here at the top. Um, see this as an opportunity to um, talk straight with the counselor. Um, we don't do interviews, so this is a great way to kind of share a little bit about you, depending on the topic that you um, that you choose. Show off your skills and personality um, and definitely share those examples. Um, don't state them, like really just show what you've um, done to embody those. So here's some examples that I'd like to share. Um, example, I'm a feminist. I devote a lot of my time volunteering in my local chapter of Girls Who Code and my local shelter serving single moms escaping domestic violence. You're not telling me you're a feminist, you're showing me you're a feminist. Example, I advocate for those who do not have a voice. Last year, I raised money for undocumented professionals by hosting dinners with friends. Um, they assist in documented students with services not available to them. You're telling me you're an advocate here without actually stating it. Example, I think outside the box, I just received a private pilot's license last year. I actually read that in one of the uh, essays here, and that tells me, of course, you think outside the box, you're resourceful even. And this example, I like to try new things. My parents have not been able to afford a lot of extracurricular activities, but I reached out to a friend who's an excellent long boarder to teach me. That also teaches um, just resourcefulness, right? You like to try new things, you're thinking outside the box. So you're not stating these things, you're sharing these things, you're showing me. That's really exciting and fun to read. All right, going on to the supplemental questions here, I'll put them up for you. Uh, they haven't changed in the last couple of years. Uh, I don't think they will um, in the near future, but I won't read them uh, verbatim. But the first prompt that you're um, asked to um, respond to are what prompted you to apply to Santa Clara uh, and how do you envision your life at SCU and beyond? The second one has uh, an ethical dilemma that you share that you care about, share about it, uh, and how can an SEU education help you prepare. So those are the two prompts that you'll have uh, at your application for Santa Clara University. Again, they may vary depending on where you're applying. Um, Please note that we champion competence, conscience, and compassion as a Jesuit university. Learn a little bit about what that means um, because we do have a lot of that information on our website. But again, we champion competence, conscience, and compassion when educating our leaders here at Santa Clara University. So have that as a uh, lens when you uh, approach these supplemental questions. Uh, great ways to um, show your interest in Santa Clara University and to do your research uh, on us when you're answering these questions. I'll put them up here. First two I put out here is um, check out our website. What calls you to Santa Clara? Uh, if you're not local, take advantage of all our virtual opportunities. Something like this, for instance, uh, when we have open house and we have other opportunities, we try to make some virtual opportunities as well. We have a virtual tour if you're not able to visit. Uh, visit on campus if you're nearby. See yourself here on the campus. Um, it's a beautiful campus, but is it your vibe? Is it something that you could live um, and, and, and study from? Um, also, again, our Jesuit mission, how do your values align with ours? Um, we definitely want to be a good match for you, and we're always looking for students who can thrive here at the university and who align with our values. 
And are you familiar with our work in our community, research programs and faculty? If you look online, you'll see a lot of information about what our faculty is doing um, with working with students and alumni and supporters in our community. Um, definitely our website is a huge, huge um, advantage for you to check out because um, um, the resource itself, it, like I said, the search engine is awesome. I have a thing for search engines with websites and ours is just top tier. So check it out and do some research. Demonstrating interest is very important for us because we have a ton of students who are interested in coming here. And um, when we're looking at funneling down those choices, we wanna make sure that the students we pick here wanna come here. They know about us, they know about what we do, they know of our values. So I'm gonna show a little bit here on what it means to show interest for, Cal um, for Santa Clara. There's a bare minimum and that's attending a college fair, any virtual options. And there's some that are might be available to where you're living. So um, definitely check out again our website. There's a SCU near you function there that you can actually explore and you'll see if we're gonna be in your area. Um, and then again, check out our website, familiarize yourself with the programs we offer. Then we have average attended campus tour, check for virtual options join Bronco Exchange. We have a portal that you can use. Uh, it's an incredible tool for prospective students. And it actually um, follows a student as they get accepted and they become alumni. Uh, it's really cool. You can make connections. You can ask questions as a prospective student from current students. And then, you know, as you go along as a student, you can make networking connections and then um, meet up with alumni as well. So again, this would be average. Um, then we have good, which it includes research faculty or program doing work on a topic you're interested in. That's always fun. There's so much stuff that you can actually research and our socials um, can definitely be the starting point because they'll, they'll link you to those articles. Um, and contact your regional counselor. Um, above and beyond would be considered uh, if you attend an open house, we have virtual options for you if you can't attend in person, participate in a program in the field you're interested in and correspond with a professor or attend one of their seminars or webinars. Those are top tier above and beyond. Uh, sometimes a professor might not have time to respond, but the fact that you reach out and that you are making an effort, that in itself you can communicate and um, we totally understand because sometimes professors, especially in the summer, do, um, do stay busy um, or that's a time that it can actually take a break. So again, these are your demonstrated interest pyramid. You can check this out in the recording. Um, just um, take a few notes. But again, we wanna know that you're interested in us as much as we're interested in you. So this is really important. And last but not least, letters of recommendation, completing the picture of you. See that meme there? Not sure if she's recommending me or just warning them about me. Um, it's just a joke. But again, with this, start early. Um, give plenty of time as you compete for time and attention. A lot of these teacher, teachers, counselors, coaches have a ton of these to do. So the earlier, the better. Ask in person if possible. That's always a good impression to make. Provide a simple outline, uh, simple facts that they can recall. Um, you're not their favorite student. Um, maybe you are, I don't know, but they have many, I'm sure. So if you can um, prompt them with some of the things that you've worked on with them that they can speak to, the better. Uh, reach out to teachers, obviously club advisors, coaches, supervisors, you all know this, um, but yeah, it's a good reminder. And then make intentional connections, especially you rising uh, juniors, um, and you still have time rising seniors to um, really make those connections and, and ask politely and, and definitely um, reach out to those who can speak of you as a incoming college student. Can they speak on your academic strengths and your attributes? Those are big. So you can't just have some random person um, that, you know, a, a teacher that you didn't really interact with because they are very honest. They will tell you, I didn't actually spend a lot of time with so-and-so, but here's my recommendation letter. Um, so try to make those um, connections be very intentional and reach out to those who actually have worked with you in the past. 
And the takeaway just in our presentation, um, take full advantage of the application process by being very intentional. Show interest in the schools that you find at the top of your list. Definitely research. Just because you heard a couple things that people have recommended or um, popular schools, it doesn't mean that you know everything that it, there is to know about them, especially if you have a particular program that you want to attend. Um, take the time to read over your official documents, make sure that they're correct, make sure that um, the records that you have um, really have everything that they're supposed to have. Make a plan and review all and everything you submit. Review it, double review it, have people look at it. Um, don't just hit submit and hope for the best. That's not a good plan. Have a support system and ask for help. Um, I know some of us don't have that um, uh, support system just automatically from our parents or family, but definitely there's um, club and organizations um, that community-based organizations that can help mentors, teachers, uh, other family members that are not uh, direct family members. Um, research your schools and find out what they're looking for and reach out, show interest. Um, if there's something already that calls to you, look that up and you know, you'll be surprised some of the schools uh, can offer you. Uh, and then also uh, be genuine, but be smart. Uh, and it goes back to the whole embellishing and, and adding things that are not true, but definitely be smart about it. You wanna be truthful, but smart. So be very intentional with that. Um, with that, I know we went a little bit over here. I will go on to Q&A, but before I wanna make sure that you check out our website, scu.edu our undergraduate admission. And then um, you can also find your counselor here. Um, we have our Instagram account. Our YouTube has a lot of great content. These recordings are gonna be on there, but you'll receive links on them. Then we have our um, LinkedIn profiles for Santa Clara and for um, our admission. So check those out. Those are really easy to follow if you want to just keep up on what we're researching and working on as faculty, staff, and students, and even alumni. So you want to uh, check those out. And they're worth following. But with that, I'll go ahead and open it up for Q&A. Kellen is going to be one reading um, the questions here. Kellen, if you can do the honors. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first question is, does SCU require tran a transcript up front um, to review the application or is a self-reported uh, transcript okay in the Common App? Yeah, we need an official transcript. We want to make sure that we got, again, all the, uh, all the applicable information there. So yeah, we need an official transcript from your school and you can request that for sure. Okay, and then if I submit my application when it opens in August, how soon can SCU provide me with a decision? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, that's an open, um, that's an open question because we have an, uh, um, a rolling admission um, here at Santa Clara. So you can uh, either apply as early decision, early um, action. So that could be as soon as I believe it's the middle of December, then you have early decision two and you have regular admission that is going to be um, later down the line in spring. So it really depends. And so it's not a first come first serve. You're not going to get, um, you know, your application decision right away. Everyone gets it at the same time. And for early action, early decision, I believe that's the middle of December, if I'm correct. Okay, and then which um, grade levels is our GPA um, taken or calculated from? Yeah, so we do from 9 to 12. Um, so that's the average um, high school. I know that some schools um, start their high school at 8th grade, but for us is 9 through 12. Okay, and then is the resume, is a resume different from the Common Act activity list, or do we need to submit both? You don't need to submit both. Both, um, uh, we wanna see the activities. Resumes are a little bit different. I know that you have the opportunity to, um, to have that. You can add it, but activities list will have that. It's one of those um, things, and I, I believe me, I, I feel your pain whenever I have applied for a job where you're like, okay, here's my resume, and then you have to type it all in. Um, if you want to provide a resume because you've actually been working and you think that that's gonna give you a little bit more insight, you can do that, but uh, activities list is um, the traditional way to go. Okay, and then where can we find um, who are regional counselors? Yeah, so again, it could be on your our admission page. You go to scu.edu, and again, I will. I don't know. Maybe I'm a uh, just a UI uh, fanatic, but 
um, our search engine is really good. So you just put in there, find your counselor and it'll take you to the page. It'll, it'll be the first result there. And then you can scroll down and see what state and region um, we're in. And if for some reason there hasn't been one assigned to you, all you have to do is email at admission, no S, so it would be admission at seu.edu. And um, you just tell them, I'd like to know who my um, regional counselor is in case, I think there's only one opening that's, um, not filled right now, but you should be able to find your counselor. Awesome. And then what attribute would you say you value most in an applicant? What attribute value? Mm -hmm. um, so again, I definitely um, would go back to our, our Jesuit um, our values here because we do operate from that. I know it's trite and I know it's very spin and marketing um, thing, but we really do value those. So um, we want to see a student who really uh, challenging them, challenges themselves, not necessarily just academically, but um, you can tell in your application when you've progressed and you've tried things and you've devoted um, that. So someone who challenges themselves, I think that's what we always look at, even in it goes through academics when we're looking at, you know, your rigor goes through your activities. Um, are you progressing? And um, other than that, I would say someone who's engaged with their community because we're very big on community and putting yourself out there. What percent of students come from out of state versus in state and does that affect your application? It doesn't affect your application. I think historically is about 50-50. I think um, last se reading season it was 51 in state and the rest were out of state but that's usually the trend so it doesn't it doesn't affect um, your, um, your application if you're out of state or international. Okay, and then writing when writing for supplements um, for SEU, can we write more figuratively or should we be sure to stick to a more literal style? Um, it's hard to say what you mean by that, but really, again, um, and this, these are the supplements. Um, when you're talking about the uh, questions to have to do with Santa Clara, we just wanna know that you are aware of who we are, what our mission is. And if you see those prompts, just follow them. Uh, but it really is, if that's your style and you can make it work, then do it. Um, we don't want you to be um, not genuine, but definitely stick to the prompt. Awesome. And then do you submit your first semester senior grades if you apply for early decision two? So, yeah. So whatever your transcript you have at the time, even if it's in progress, we will look at it. We will look at anything official from your school. So that's the, that's the, um, that's the ticket, right? It has to come officially from your school. Are your merit-based scholarships contingent on SAT, ACT scores or are other factors such as GPA or essays um, involved? Uh, so when we're looking at merit, so um, right now Santa Clara is uh, test optional, so we don't um, look at your grades when we are looking at your application. Now you can still submit them, and um, the way um, that you look at that, you, you <coughs> look at that is um, when we talked about transcripts, I said, does your transcript uh, really show who you are as an academic um, in your academic career? And if let's say, for instance, you struggled in a couple classes, either because you couldn't really um, get into the whole Zoom situation, or you just didn't connect with a teacher, or you just had a really hard time that year, um, but your scores in math and English are amazing, that's when you would add them. Um, if they're, you know, above average, I would definitely add those scores to really um, have a cohesive understanding of who you are as a student. Um, that helps, um, but it, we don't ask for them. You can submit them if you want. Um, but when it comes to merit, um, we look at your application. And of course we look at your academically, you know, there you look at your GPA, you look at uh, um, other factors that we look at. We look at your leadership tendencies, right? Are you, do you, um, are you part of your community? Do you stand out in that sense? Um, but they don't uh, really look at the, the test unless you add them because, you know, you want to uh, have that bigger picture of your transcript if you struggled, but uh, no, we don't look at test scores in that sense. We look at your whole uh, application, and as we're reading, we make um, recommendations that you be reviewed for a particular merit scholarship, and it goes through different readings, so it's not up to one counselor, so that's a really cool way to make sure that you get a good um, review of your application. Awesome. And how do I show uh, demonstrated interest in an application? Is there a field where you enter that information in the Common App? 
Yeah, so we're looking at, um, so you can either if marry it into, you know, your essay or supplementals, like I've seen in the supplementals where uh, it's about Santa Clara University, um, students like to, you know, weave in that like, oh, I love, you know, uh, I love how this a faculty member has been working on um, homelessness, uh, uh, people who experience homelessness. And, you know, uh, I've done, you know, some work here, but I love how what you guys are doing. If I were there, I do, you know, these great things. Um, so that's a way that you kind of already marry that in there because that shows me that you looked at our website, you followed a faculty member, you've seen what they do. Another way is in your, um, file we see when you participated in different things. So uh, that's how you show uh, demonstrated interest. If you go to a tour, we um, definitely keep you there on our uh, records. Uh, if you uh, attended one of our uh, seminars and webinars, we, we see that. So you can either marry it into your responses or we can see it in your file that you participated in different things. Awesome. And what are Santa Clara's average ACT scores? And do you recommend uh, reporting those scores if we're within that range? Yeah, I don't know what the averages are. I started when uh, they were still optional. So I don't, I'm not familiar with those uh, facts right now. I think we have a counselor on chat, if I'm mis not mistaken. Uh, Randy, if you have that information, I personally don't because again, we're in those years that we're not uh, reporting them. Okay, Randy says here 32, 33 for SAT are the average. Um, again, you can report them if they're um, if they're good. That's what I would do <laughs> if they're good or if they're good and you want to just add that other glimpse of who you are as a student. If again, if you've struggled um, during your um, your high school years in certain classes, it just gives us that like, oh, okay, well they you know they had a little struggle here, but look at their scores or did, they did really well. So that's a good way, uh, good reason to add them. Does Santa Clara provide several scholarships? And if so, are they located on the school website? Yeah, we do have merit scholarships that you can look at. Um, you are evaluated for them as we review your application. So um, you don't have to do a separate application for them. Um, you're evaluated for them. And yes, they are listed in our website. Again, you can just do a quick search, but just off the top of my head, there's a Dean, Provost, um, Presidential, um, Johnson. So there's different ones that you um, can uh, qualify for as we are evaluating your application and we make recommendations as readers. Um, and again, it goes through a process. So it's not contingent on one person reading your application. Great. Is it better to take high school courses related to the field that you want to study at Santa Clara, or is it better to take courses um, relating to all different types of uh, fields? It really depends if you already know what you want to do. So I've seen a lot of the engineering because uh, our engineering school is very competitive. So um, some students have been savvy to that uh, and they start taking a uh, lot of strong math, um, some uh, coding classes, um, uh, other supplemental uh, classes uh, that deal with it um, just because it, one, it's available. Um, to uh, some schools don't offer those specialized courses, but if they are and they're interested and they really, really just want to come for an engineering school, then yeah, if you already know where you want to land and you have those um, available to you, absolutely, you know, that helps. You want to see that interest. We want to see that um, you've made that uh, dedication and concentration already. Uh, um, that's exciting to see when you're, you know, when we're seeing so many different applicants. If you don't, uh, that's okay. Um, you know, focus your strengths on, you know, making sure that your English, your math, your science, all of those are, are strong. Um, but again, if you already know and you feel very strongly about it, which I know some of you are very um, already know somehow you just wired that way and those are available to you, then yeah, that's gonna look great. Awesome. And does Santa Clara offer financial aid for international students? And if so, is that need-based? Uh, international students, uh, Randy, can you, I know you're online. Um, I don't normally deal with international students when it comes to financial aid, but if Randy, who's on the chat, um, can't answer that now, can you, can you, can you, let me see. Uh, yes, merit base, yes. Uh, and that would be the Dean scholarship. So, Awesome. And how important are AP scores when applying? 
Uh, they are important. Okay, so um, when we look and evaluate your rigor, we look at how many AP classes you're taking uh, versus um, you know what your your school is offering. So we look at that in rigor. Uh, we don't really care much about your test scores at this point. Um, I mean, it does kind of give a little bit of light, like oh, you took the test, that's awesome, but. Um, it really doesn't have a lot of weight in the sense that um, that actually becomes more important as you come in as a student and then we evaluate if those credits uh, translate over um, for um, for credit here in the university, but um, not if we haven't taken them, we just look at it for rigor. And what was the average GPA for the uh, 22 admitted class? Average GPA, it depends because we have three different schools. So there's um, the School of Engineering, there's School of Business and the College of Arts and Sciences. I think we're actually working on getting the stats for those. Um, you can get a good feel uh, online. We have the stats for the class of 2025. I don't think it has varied, but again, we're working on getting those um, released um, probably in July. Um, so you can take a look at that, um, but um, right now, currently, the stats uh, that are online are for the class of 2025, and again, you can do a quick search for that. I think we have time for one more. I know we went over, and I apologize for that. We have one uh, more question that we want to answer. Okay, if we apply early decision and get accepted, but without a scholarship, is it still binding? Yeah, it's still binding. So a, a, Decision one, decision two is just binding. You get accepted, you have to come. Um, that's why it's super, super important. I mean, you can, uh, at the time of application, we can evaluate you for those merit scholarships, but it's very important to have the FAFSA and the CSS profile done and ready by the time you apply and submit because um, that will get all, everything will start running and your financial aid package will get put together. Um, so you wanna have that information in there as soon as possible. Um, so um, that's a big thing, a CSS profile and FAFSA when you apply. And then um, obviously we can't guarantee that you're gonna get a scholarship, but you will get evaluated for the merit scholarships with your application. All right, well, those were a lot of questions and I know there's a lot more um, on the Q&A and I apologize we didn't get to all of them, but um, we have great customer service at our admission office. So if you still have those questions um, for us, you can just email admission without the S, so it's just admission at scu.edu and uh, we'll filter those out. Some of them will get answered right away from our staff because they're amazing. And some of them might be um, just uh, distributed to your uh, particular territory counselor, and, but they will get answered. Um, that's a fact. We don't um, like to keep anyone waiting. We wanna make sure that you get all those um, answered. So don't be shy, like immediately, like admission at scu.edu. After my first nine o'clock uh, presentation for this, I got um, uh, a request for information for that already. So um, be on it. Like this is a time to ask the questions. Don't be shy. Don't think like, oh, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. Do it like now. If you have a question that I did not answer, just get out of the way. Um, and believe me, our, our staff is um, one of the best staff when it comes to um, customer service. If we're not answering like the, the, um, the people who manage the front desk and who manage this uh, address, the admission one, um, they will be on the counselors to make sure we answer you. So take this opportunity to really get those questions answered and um, join our following um, topic Thursdays. You can find them again online. I'm sure you guys got an email about the list of them. Uh, all the counselors have great information and um, I just want to say thank you for Kellen and for our counselors who join us who helped answer questions Randy, um, which is very grateful to do these seminars for you webinars for you guys. Um, it's um, really, really exciting so um, just a best of luck uh, on the application process. Um, just being um, getting out there and getting this information is the first step and it's scary but. I promise you take it day by day and you do everything you need to do on like little chunks. Uh, you can definitely get it all done. Um, but again, reach out if we didn't answer your question. Um, we're here for you. So um, yeah, thank you so much, Kellen, everyone who participated. I hope you have a great rest of the week.